Good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for coming out for an update on the investigation into the missing mother and child from here in Austin. I appreciate your patience uh, in waiting for this briefing today. Uh, I want to introduce a few of the folks that are here with me that will be speaking at this press conference today. I have Special Agent in Charge of the FBI, Christopher Combs. I have Margaret Moore, the Travis County District Attorney. Uh, with us representing DPS is uh, Todd Snyder, who is the Regional Director, and then Austin Police Department Detective Brad Harries. I uh, want to identify at the beginning of this press conference that we will go against our standard practice of taking questions at the end of this press conference because this is still a very active and ongoing investigation. We have multiple teams of investigators that are at different jurisdictions as we speak in this room today that are still investigating this case. So we are going to give you all of the information that we can share at this point. We understand there is a tremendous amount of, in, of interest in this case, but we're going to give you all the information that we can, and we commit to you that we will give you updates as we can without impacting the integrity of this investigation. It is heartbreaking circumstances that bring us here today. Uh, as you all are well aware that there has been a lot that has developed uh, in the overnight hours. This all began back on December 12th when 33-year-old uh, Heidi Broussard and infant daughter, two-week-old baby Margot Casey were last seen uh, as they dropped off their sibling and their uh, son at school, and we have been investigating their disappearance since that time. On Tuesday, APD Detective Harries gave a very thorough briefing to the media on what had been developed at that point through the investigation, and there's a lot that has happened since that time most notably the events that took place out in the Houston and Harris County area overnight and into the early morning hours today. Detective Harries will give you a briefing here momentarily, updating the specifics of what took place. But what we will confirm at this point is that we did recover an infant female child that we do believe at this time is Margot. However, we are awaiting the results of DNA testing to confirm that identity, and that testing may take us between 48 and 72 hours to get that confirmation. Additionally, we recovered the body of an adult female. We do believe that this is Ms. Broussard. However, again, we are awaiting the results of the autopsy to confirm her identity. Uh, we do have one person that has been arrested and charged. The charges that have been filed at this point are two charges of kidnapping and one charge of tampering with a corpse. We are not confirming the identity of the suspect at this time. Uh, I do understand that there are pictures being circulated and names being circulated in the media. However, we're not going to confirm, again, to protect the integrity of this ongoing investigation. There may be additional charges that are filed in this case as the investigation con uh, Con con carries on, and uh, that will be determined as we develop more information and uh, uncover more evidence. This was a tremendous undertaking by many different divisions that I will recognize uh, before Detective Harris comes up and gives a briefing. Several units from the Austin Police Department part participated in this investigation to include our Homicide Division, our Missing Persons Division, our Special Investigations Unit, our Robbery Unit, our Violent Crimes Task Force, our organized crime division. The Texas DPS Rangers were involved, the Travis County District Attorney's Office, the FBI, the FBI's Child Abduction Rapid Deployment Team, their card squad was here, Texas Parks and Wildlife, Travis County Search and Rescue, and Child Protective Services, all pulled together to work on this case. Again, everyone hoping for an outcome different than the one it appears that we had, and that is with a loss of life. And although we are grateful that it appears as though we have safely recovered baby Margot, again, we do believe that uh, Ms. Broussard uh, lost her life in this incident. Um, Detective Harries will now come up and give you a briefing on the events that have taken place uh, in this investigation over the past 24 hours. <coughs> Good afternoon, my name is Brad Harries. I'm a detective with the Austin Police Department Cold Case Homicide and Missing Persons Unit. I'm going to go through a brief timeline of the events that have happened in the past seven or eight days. This is not all inclusive. On Thursday, December 12th, 2019, Heidi Broussard, she's a 33-year-old white female, and her two-week-old baby, Margot, were last seen dropping off Heidi's six-year-old child 
at his school at Cowan Elementary. Heidi and Margot are believed to have returned to their residence in the area of William Cannon and South First at approximately 7.30 in the morning on December 12th. The complainant arrived home, uh, found that Heidi, his girlfriend, and Margot, his daughter, were not home. Uh, as the day progressed, the complainant went to pick up their uh, six-year-old child from after-school activities and found that Margot was not there. The complainant became alarmed and contacted the Austin Police Department along with friends and family trying to find the location of his girlfriend and daughter. The Austin Police Department was contacted at approximately 9, I'm sorry, 7.31 p.m. on December 12th. Officers on scene began an investigation. Um, they searched for them both there in the complex, conducted preliminary investigations and contacted me that evening on December 12th, 2019. At that time, a bolo was issued that's a be on the lookout within our department. Both were entered into national and statewide databases as missing, and their information uh, was dispersed throughout the community using a reverse 911 system that reached over 4,000 people in that area. Their images and descriptions were released to the media later in the morning of December 12th, excuse me, of December 13th, 2019. Uh, we utilized various resources and legal processes in the attempt to locate Heidi and Margot. This has been an ongoing process with numerous warrants that have been, uh, been approved and executed in the search for them. We have spoken with family, with friends, with coworkers, with neighbors. We have canvassed the areas uh, that we know them to have been in. We have done video canvases of any areas that we have believed them to have been in. Uh, we conducted video surveillance in association with some of our federal and statewide partners. We have done extensive video collection, online and social media research, uh, interviews, phone calls, uh, and these investigations have gone across Texas and gone across uh, out state lines. Nick Mick, one of our partners, released a nationwide flyer with images depicting Margot and Heidi. Uh, as we progress through this investigation, local, state, and federal partners followed tips and leads that were provided by the public. We received numerous uh, calls to our tip lines, notifications online uh, of various tips of people who thought they had seen Heidi or Margo, had information related to their location, and those tips were vetted and explored and investigated fully. As the week progressed, this current week, a lead was generated that uh, created a location of interest in the Houston area in Harris County. Federal, state, and local resources deployed to that area of Harris County and began to investigate a residence there. Ultimately, those investigators encountered an individual outside of that resident uh, who was detained on Thursday, December 19th, 2019. As the evening progressed, a search warrant was issued for property on, uh, at that residence, both vehicles and the residence. Those search warrants were signed and were carried out by the Austin Police Department, uh, Department of Public Safety, and, and with assistance from the Federal Bureau of Investigation as we conducted those uh, searches. During that search, we located a baby who is currently safe, currently healthy, who is currently in the care of Child Protective Services. Uh, that child's visual appearance is consistent with that of baby Marco. As the search continued, Officers located a deceased adult female on the property. And as Chief Manley said earlier, uh, early indications would lead us to believe that that is Heidi. The property in Houston continues to be an active uh, scene. We are investigating multiple locations between Austin and Houston and in the surrounding areas. Uh, with the assistance of the FBI, state level partners with DPS, the Texas Rangers, and the Harris County Sheriff's Office. The Harris County Medical Examiner's Office is conducting an autopsy today of the deceased adult female uh, to determine the cause of death, determine the manner of death. Uh, and as, those, as that information is released to us investigators, we will continue our investigation of this event. Uh, as Chief Manley said, an arrest has been made in this case. Uh, the charges are two counts of kidnapping, one count of tampering with a corpse. The total bond for the three charges is $600,000. Uh, that person is is in custody as we speak. As I've said, this is an ongoing and active investigation. 
If you have any information related to the disappearance of Heidi Broussard or her two-week, now three-week-old daughter, Margot, we ask that you contact the Austin Police Department at 512-974-5250. Yes, last name H-E-R-R-I-E-S, first name Brad, B-R-A-D, I'm a detective. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Christopher Combs. I'm the FBI Special Agent in Charge. It's been a horrible week here in Austin. We had all prayed that we would be able to find Heidi uh, alive. Unfortunately, as the Chief expressed, uh, we don't believe that is the case. We are very thankful, though, that through the combined efforts here, we were able to recover baby Margot, and the baby seems to be in, in, in very good health. I know everybody asks, how do we do these things? How are we able to do that? Uh, some of that you know, we can't discuss openly right now because it's ongoing, but I just wanted to stress that these recoveries happen because of dogged police work, where the Austin Police Department, their missing persons unit, has done an incredible job in combination with the Texas Rangers and with the assets that the FBI was able to bring to bear. It, it really is through that partnership of those agencies with a lot of other help from a lot of other agencies that we were able to uh, recover that baby, which really is you know, one of the greatest things I think we could do is to, to save a child. One of the things we brought to bear in this particular case is something called the FBI's Child Abduction Rapid Deployment Team. These are national teams that the FBI has around the country that we deploy at the request of our state and local partners whenever a child is abducted. Uh, we were able to bring that team here to Austin and work next to the detectives and the rangers to bring this case to closure and, and to recover that child. Uh, the CARD teams were de developed back in 2006 and through this investigation, they've deployed 167 times. Um, what that team really brings to bear is, is that expertise of being through so many of these abductions, knowing how they work, the, the clues we should look at, and, and really acting as consultants to the great detectives and rangers to help them go through this horrible event and to find children as quickly as we can. Uh, I'd like to personally thank Chief Manley uh, and his detectives for an outstanding effort here. Our great partners with DPS, the Texas Rangers, uh, and the FBI agents that worked this, this case, all of which has been going 24-7 since the Heidi and her baby were uh, reported missing. It's an incredibly hard job to do, and it really shows the dedication of the officers, the Rangers, and the agents to be able to go 24-7 on this and to at least bring us back this baby safe and sound. Thank you very much. I'm Travis County District Attorney Margaret Moore, M-O-O-R-E. Uh, I'm not, like Special Agent in Charge uh, Combs, I wish we had uh, completely good news today, but I am proud of the efforts that have taken place here. I think it's a demonstration of uh, the dedication of law enforcement and the DA's office that we spend, uh, once the call came in, uh, we were working on it 24-7. I want to commend uh, the, the dedicated lawyers in my office, two of whom are standing here with me today. We established a major crimes hotline when I took office, and uh, these uh, attorneys take on uh, this responsibility in addition to their regular duties, so they are on call 24-7. And we got this call. They've been working day in and day out with law enforcement to assist in getting the papers that were needed to conduct the searches and other uh, pieces of the investigation. We will continue to be involved in this investigation, of course, as we evaluate what, if any, additional charges need to be brought. I always um, am, feel very privileged to work with these dedicated individuals, and I'm also pleased to be able to tell the citizens of this county how collaborative and thorough law enforcement is as we work on these major cases. I also would like to thank um, the Harris County District Attorney, uh, Kim Ogg. Her office extended us all, every courtesy uh, and uh, assistance that we needed down there. So and I expect that to continue. So thank you for being here. And as we wrap up the press conference today, 
I just want to express the heartfelt condolences of everyone you see standing here with me, our community, our department, that we did not have two rescues, but only one, it appears. And our hearts and our minds are with Heidi and her family today and as we go forward. I appreciate you respecting that we cannot take questions because we've given you everything we can at this point, and we are committed to providing you with additional information at which time we can when it will not impact the further and ongoing investigations. I will say, though, that Special Agent in Charge Christopher Combs will do individual interviews if you have questions regarding the CARD team and their operations, but I will reiterate that it is only about the CARD team and their operations, and no questions regarding the investigation or the occurrences will be handled if you choose to do one of those individuals. So thank you all again for coming out uh, for uh, covering this, and we are committed to giving you information when we can. Thank you.